So I am a political activist, but not belonging to any party. So I don't have any allegiance to any political party, neither I am bound by any political discipline of any political party. I am here to speak the truth and nothing but truth. Neither I am here to give any ammunition to Sambit Patra. But the issue is such, he is bound to get some advantage. <laughs> So before making this analysis, telling a bit of history is also required because I have been telling my history, my ancestors' history for two years now, since 2015. Many of you have already learned about this fact, but there are still things to be told. Samhiti referred to primary source. He referred to writers. For me, what is a primary source? What my grandmother told me, what she heard from her grandmother, is a direct source. And there become six generations, my grandmother's grandmother, and she was, she lived during the time of Tipu, it's hardly 200 years now. So that's a direct information. No other source is required for me to believe this. And I have come from a place, the outskirts of Mangalore city, a village called Aikala. There's a church in that village. I was born there, I grew up, grew up there and still living there. And in front of the church there is a school run by the church, I studied there. When I was in 4th standard, the social lesson said, Tipu Sultan was a great man, he used to give milk and biscuits to the prisoners. This was the lesson I learned. At the same time, just opposite what church is there, we celebrate annual festival day each, every last Wednesday of November, we have the annual festival of that church. And during that time, we honor three Bhatt families of neighboring three villages, Aikada, Elinja and Thalipadu. Guttus we call, Guttu means they are the village heads. Not three persons, not even three families, three village heads, we honor them with one banana bunch, full one banana bunch to each family. And that honor is for saving our church from Tipu Sultan. <laughs> even now we do it, last year we did it, this year also we are going to do this. This is a fact in front of me. What my grandmother tells is very similar to what we are practicing, but the textbooks say something different, very, very different, exactly opposite. As I grew, there was a movie called Sword of Tipu Sultan, again glorifying that I went. So what is this? There was a confusion. What I read, what I see is different and what I hear is different. Then there was, see how it goes on, moves on. Then there was a BJP government in 2008 in Karnataka, one of the higher education ministers commented. One comment he made, Tipu Sultan was anti Kannada. That's all, it caught fire. It went on so much that he had to withdraw his statement and ask for pardon. Probably this incident encouraged Siddharam Iyaji to celebrate his birthday. Because that was the day when that minister had to withdraw his statement, nobody stood by him. So he must have encouraged by this. So I said my church was attacked and it was saved by Hindu families. There was another church near Modu which was saved, saved by Jains. Other two, 25 churches, nobody could save. They were raised to the ground. Right from Sumkeri of <coughs> Karwar up to Bangalore, there were 27 churches. All of them were attacked and he managed to destroy 25 of them. They destroyed to such an extent that couldn't even make out where the church stood. The people were taken to Srirangapatnam. After attacking the churches, they were taken to Srirangapatnam and they were released only after his death, after 15 years. When they returned back, in some places they couldn't even identify where the church stood. The best example is one historian, the late ALP D'Souza himself told me, narrated a story. One church was destroyed while rebuilding, they couldn't identify, so they built two churches in two different places. Now, two churches in the same name stands, that is the proof that to that extent was destroyed. Now, there is a mosque at the hilltop in Mangalore, the Bauta Buddha is a famous place. There stands a mosque today and it was written there, built by Tipu Sultan. I have seen that board, now it has disappeared. 
but the fact history says that it was built with the stones of Milagris Church. Milagris Church was destroyed and with those stones that mosque is built and mosque is still there. Though Milagris Church is rebuilt now with some other stones. <laughs> and the foremost church, cathedral we call, Rosary Cathedral was destroyed and Sultan Bhattiri was built and Sultan Bhattiri is standing in front of us today. So these are facts. This is what he did to the symbols. Symbols of religion. What about the human beings? The historians say the figure V. V means history calls us as Kendra Christian. Now presently we are known as Mangalorean Christians. But when history was written, we are known as Kendra Christian because from Karwar to Mangalore, British has called it as a Kendra region. North Kendra and South Kendra. Today we call it Uttara Kannada and Dachina Kannada. So Kendra Christians, Konkani speaking, Konkani as mother tongue. So this group is identified as Kendra Christians. And we have a history of 500 years in this coastal Karnataka. Earlier we migrated from Goa. So for the 500 years, past 500 years we reside there. And the biggest enemy in these 500 years is Tipu Sultan. No single person has done us the damage that this man did in the past 500 years. He arrested all 80,000 population what existed those days after raising the churches. He took them captives and made them walk to Sri Rangapattam. It took about six weeks, even that is recorded, six weeks it took to uh, reach Sri Rangapattam. And by the time they reached Sri Rangapattam, 20,000 people have lost their life. That's what on the journey. He did not even spare women, children, elderly. Even the pregnant women were not spared. They were made to walk and some of them got delivered on the way. That is also written. The young babies, by not withstanding the strain, they died on the way and they were buried on the wayside. This is also recorded. So to that extent, the brutality was. There are two places, 13 that I have to mention here. One is Nettarekare, one is Gadai Kallu and Beltangadi. Nettarekare is a place in between Beltangadi and Mangalore. In one place, in that single place, he killed about 5,000 people. There was some problem. Some soldiers attempted on the women and the young boys resisted. So there was a fight. 5,000 people died in one place. The entire area became red. There is a pond nearby. The entire pond became red. And since then it is known as Nettarekere, the pool of blood. Even today it is named, known by that name. The other place is Gadai Kallu. The youths who could fight and uh, create trouble to the army were taken on the mound and pushed down the hill. There were tigers and <coughs> lions. They could eat them. So there was another place of genocide. Apart from this, throughout the way, while on the walk, many people died, 20,000 people lost their life. They were taken to, as captives. Only after his death in 1799, May 4th, they got released while going back, while releasing, only 15 to 20,000 people could return. That means three-fourth of a generation was destroyed, three-fourth. There is no other history of India. And why we survive today, why I am here today, because he died. He died an untimely death. Had he lived for another 5-10 years, probably Kendra Christian would have been one sentence in history. Such a generation existed once upon a time. If I stand here today, May 4th, 1799 is, so I call it, it's a great day for me. This is a brief history, I can go on, but today's topic is something else, mindset. Okay, now, I said, so many people of ours are killed. I have been telling this for the two years in the open media. I have written articles about it. Not that our, uh, our community do not know it. Every person in our community knows it. As I told you, my grandmother told me, everybody's grandmother has told them. So every person is aware. Every person is aware of the brutality of Tipu Sultan. Then why they are not talking? That's a big question now. It's not that we are a voiceless community. Our number may be very small. Our cloud is very big. 